I have a tough act to follow. Uh, there's all, first of all, there's only one of me, but uh, what, uh, what I lack in count, I make up for in volume, so it's fine. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, hopefully you guys know somewhat about who I am, but I, uh, I'm a, a core team member. Um, I have a very severe open source problem, um, like significantly severe, uh, to the point where uh, some coworkers saw that I didn't commit something for a day and were concerned and called to check in to make sure that I was okay. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, and I work at Twitch. Um, and uh, it's a really awesome, uh, awesome team over there. Uh, we're building uh, awesome features, and it's really great to see uh, some of the some of the things that Tom and you have talked about. Some of the things we've been doing uh, in Ember over the course of the last, I guess, two years since I've been working on it, um, uh, really applied and ramped forward uh, in in like a pre 1.0 app all the way up to now we're on the latest LTS, and it's great. Uh, before I get too far into it, I always like to, uh, to, to bring up my family and have a slide for them. Um, like, none of the things that I could do, I could do without them. Uh, they, are, um, they are like the foundation behind everything that, that I'm able to do, and I'm sure that y'all can, uh, can also say similar about y'all's family. So uh, I always like to, uh, to make sure to, to make that a point. Um, all right, so... Uh, now, uh, the thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit different for me. Um, so usually I'm up here giving talks about technical things and deep uh, internal like code slides and all this stuff, but there, I don't believe there are any slides with code on them. Um, so we, uh, we're going to work this out together. Um, I, I also, uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing an experiment. Um, so I get, sent my slide deck to uh, a, uh, one of the core team emeritus, uh, uh, Alex Machinier. Uh, last night, and he sent me back my slide deck slightly modified. <laughs> so I have not seen this slide deck, so we'll see what happens. It'll be great. It'll be great. Just uh, hopefully we'll just like hit next real fast if we see anything upsetting. So it'll be fine. Um, so uh, so the thing I'm going to talk about is is basically how can we um, how can we uh, move forward uh, with all of the great pie in the sky things that Tom and Yehuda talked about. Um, things that, that some of it we can use today, but it's a little bit of work, like Tom mentioned. Um, and uh, how do we, as a community, as a framework, how do we move from one place to another place? Uh, basically, how do, how do you uh, chart a course from essentially like where you are, like the past, basically, through into the, the future uh, where you want to go? Like, uh, um, and, and how, how that works. Uh, um, for, for Ember, for, uh, for your apps, it's, uh, and I'm going to show how you can actually do the same things that we do as framework authors um, inside your app, and it actually makes the same amount of sense. So, um, so let's, let, let's just like brief look at some of the things we've done in, um, in, <laughs> in Ember. Um, so, so like we started, uh, so when I first started Ember, in Ember, it was uh, just before 1.0. Uh, I barely knew any JavaScript. Uh, I only I grabbed Ember because it was the one that seemed the most sane at the time. Um, uh, thankfully, I still agree with that assessment. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we had some uh, so to me really uh, uh, confusing things uh, going on in, in in the apps that, that that we built at the time. Things like uh, container view, manually managing all your views, appending them, and, and whatnot. Um, Using uh, context shifting in your templates, uh, uh, Matt Beal gave a great talk at last year's Ember uh, camp about uh, about this exact thing about how uh, templates uh, in modern Ember are um, like they actually have lexical scope and it's actually more like real programming. Um, and uh, he explains it way better. Also, a great aside about crisps and chips. So it's it's a you know you got to watch it. Um, and then. Uh, this is the thing that really got me. So I came from the Rails land, um, and, uh, and testing is, is really ingrained in the Ruby space. Um, and when I started with Ember, uh, it, you know, obviously I love Ember, but like, really? <laughs> testing? <laughs> really? Uh, I could not figure out how to get my Ember 1.0 app to be tested with anything other than like just running Capybara and driving the, uh, the browser manually. Uh, and that was like really, really slow. And every time I added a new test, 
we had a significant slowdown in, in the, like, CI speed and all this stuff. So that, like, these are just some of the places we've come from. Um, so, so, uh, so thankfully, Ember 2.0 let us sort of drop some of the uh, wacky things. Um, we, we've, killed, uh, we've killed views. We've killed the proxy and controllers, so like object controller and array controller, uh, and, um, uh, and the context shifting. Uh, so to me, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest thing that we removed was the context shifting. That was the most mind-bendy thing, looking at a template, not knowing what curly curly foo actually referenced in that context. That was super, uh, super difficult to track. Uh, it's also one of the most complicated things to refactor away from. Uh, because as you refactor your templates, you, you might want to extract two co components. You might want to um, pull out and just invoke individual components in your each or, or something like that. Um, and it, it becomes really complicated to know where this uh, specific uh, mustache invocation is actually referencing. What is, what is this in the context? Um, so that, that was a, a really huge thing in my mind that we, that we were able to move away from. Um, and then, uh, so today's, like, today's testing story is, is actually pretty decent, right? Like you can Ember generate a component and you get a test and you can render a block, uh, a handlebar snippet, and you can see what it looks like. Uh, and then you can like assert on its output. Like I think that's, that's great. That's like light years beyond uh, where we were uh, when, when I started with Ember. Um, and in today, like, uh, if, you, if you read Hacker News, which I actually don't suggest anyone do, um, if you do, uh, you'll actually see Ember being represented as the thing that does testing right, which is like, like the world has been turned upside down, right? Like uh, from, from where we started. And I think that is uh, amazing. And, um, and I think that sort of transition, those things are only possible because we have a process for plotting a course and moving things into the future. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, so we have, uh, so, so like what, what is next? Like now we're still doing this, like you don't stop. Like we've done things, we've moved, we moved from one place to another um, and, and we still have a long way to go, right? Um, so some of the things we're currently talking about, you've seen them in RFCs, but um, like project layout, how things look, um, the, uh, a better testing harness, uh, both of those are in RFCs. Performance, Tom and you have talked a lot about that uh, and a lot of the work that's going into Glimmer 2 and the object model stuff um, is, is all related to this. Um, and then making Ember more modular so you can start with, um, with smaller chunks and, and sort of ramp up as you go. So, um, so, so this, is, um, this is what, uh, what we're doing. <laughs> hi, hi boys, yeah, the future, yes, the future, yes. All right. Uh, all right, so, uh, so now let's, let's talk about like how, how do we do these things? Um, how, do, how does, this, how does this, this work for Ember, and, uh, and what, do we, what do we actually do? So the first thing you've got to do is you have to, uh, you have to identify what's going, like you have to look at your, uh, your, your the, you know, the project, the Ember uh, like apps, and, and decide, like find things that, that are wrong, find things that feel bad, find things that need improvement, right? So you've got, to, you've got to analyze what's been working for you, what's not been working for you, and, uh, and, and um, that process actually itself is hard because you're so ingrained in, in doing the things and building the things that, uh, that sometimes having that independent perspective of like, wait, this kind of is nuts, this kind of is not great, um, is sometimes hard to do. So, so this, is, uh, this is the first step, like identifying things that need, need work and improvement. Um, and then you've got, to, uh, you've got to come up with a plan. Um, y the plan doesn't have to be specific uh, about like steps and details, but you need to know, so now you've identified the things and you've got a plan, what do you want the future to be? Now, oftentimes, um, what, what I find, uh, well, from my perspective, one of the things that I find that we do is we're uh, more focused on what we want the future to look like and less focused about the steps between the two things other than to make sure that it's possible. Um, so, uh, so like, it, it's a thing when I do uh, when I do add-ons or do independent open source development like not Ember stuff. Um, I oftentimes do like readme-driven development, right? Like, what do I want this API to like before I written any code? How do I want to use this component? Or how do I want to use this uh, this library? Um, and and that's the kind of thing that uh, that you have to do. Like, what do I want it to be? Like, it, like we know that this is messed up. Something is wrong, uh, and and we have. Uh, we have an idea that something is, is going uh, not well here, but, but you have to decide, like, how do you want it to work? Like, you have to figure out the general idea of, of a plan forward. Um, 
then you need to communicate that. So in, in Ember, uh, what we're, you know, we have RFC process, we have a ton of uh, folks giving talks, like Tommy Nehuda, uh, myself, uh, all the core team. Like we're, we're out evangelizing for the future, for the plans that we're making. Um, and, and the RFC process allows us to communicate with our community, with the stakeholders, the people that actually care, and take their comments and take their feedback and actually roll it back into the plan and change things. Um, we're also able to make sure that the, the path, like the individual steps, like the, um, the, uh, the, 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 like the way you teach a thing, the way a thing is interpreted and, uh, and handled, all that stuff can be um, fleshed out together, right? Like you guys have a way better idea of what it's like to be a new Ember user than I do, probably, right? Uh, you guys all interface and you have, you have coworkers, you have people that like you see all the time that are new, new folks to Ember. Um, so, so this is a super important uh, feedback cycle uh, on, on the RFCs, on the planning things. You know, like, um, so if we, um, if we had done the, um, the original version of the module proposal um, that, that people push back on, if we had done that uh, without actually asking for feedback from the community, we would have been way worse than where we are today. And I think, um, I think this part is super important. Um, and this is actually uh, um, equally important in, uh, in app stuff. So, uh, so then we've got to implement. Oftentimes, this, um, this comes together with the, uh, the RFC process. Like you're, uh, so I find myself spiking things to see, like, is this feasible, especially for migration stuff? Like, is it possible to go to bridge the gap? Can you run things together? Like with the testing RFC, um, you know, we have to make sure that all of those grand ideas that I wrote, uh, that we can actually do them, and, uh, and that you can still run your current tests side by side. Like, rewriting all of your tests would be horrible. Um, you know, so things like that. So, so the implementation uh, then informs the cycle, um, and it lets you continue to improve the plan and the RFC, or uh, the, the communication aspect, uh, like in, in, a, uh, in a, a nice cycle. Um, and then you continue, you repeat. <laughs> all right. Uh, Zoe Solitaire, nice. Um, so then you, you continue, you repeat, you, start, you basically start over. Like you, you then continue to um, identify more things and repeat the cycle. So we have a whole slew of outstanding RFCs, things that we're working on in the middle of, um, progressing forward. Um, and this, uh, this, is, uh, this is really good. This is the same thing um, that, uh, that I think that uh, most people should be doing. Um, so uh, Yehuda gave a great talk back in 2011, I think called uh, framework thinking. Um, and, and this is the sort of stuff he's talking about, basically thinking like a framework developer uh, as opposed to just an app developer, quote unquote. Um, and um, and, and, and uh, so when I proposed to give this talk, like the thing that I wanted to show was these things, while um, they may be great for the core team, uh, how does this help you? What does this have to do with you and your apps? Oh. Um, all right, there we go. Um, so, uh, so how do you take how do you take these things from uh, from you know like you know me up here talking about us doing things in framework and how do you apply them to your app? So, so first of all, you have to identify things. Um, so in your app, like you're you've got patterns, you've got things that are painful, you've got things that don't work well. Um, Eric's gonna come up and talk about theming. That's a really good example of something that most people do really horribly. Uh, and you don't know you've done it bad until you're like miles deep in a pile of crap. Um, and uh, you know, that's, that's bad, right? So, um, so another thing is uh, you end up with these components that have these ever-growing signatures of like, oh, let's just tack on a 12th uh, param. Or like, and it gets really hard and gnarly to track and fear, figure out what's going on. Um, so this is the kind of thing, uh, like in, in Twitch's app, we have a number of things where uh, from, from views, from like having hundreds of views uh, to, uh, to things where you've got uh, this repeated boilerplate code in the templates that you could have refactored to components. Those are the kinds of things that, that we're talking about. Identifying those things um, is exactly the same as you do in a framework, right? Like it's no different. Like you're literally just looking at at your app, at the things you deal with on a daily basis, and deciding uh, like what things kind of smell fishy. Um, and then you make a plan. You have to uh, decide what do we want this to look like. It's exactly the same problem. Um, you know, you, you've got to figure out where where is the future, where we want to go. Like you're not going to be able to go there in one step, 
but you need to know where you want to go or you can't get anywhere, right? And sometimes lateral movements, uh, refactoring from a view to just being like maybe a wrapper component or uh, refactoring from like creating a new component to start replacing usages of an older legacy one, things like that. Th those, are, th those are the small steps. Uh, while they may seem somewhat lateral at the time, um, are ultimately the things that, uh, that let you step forward and, uh, and, and move on. Um, so part of the plan, just like in framework development, part of the plan is figuring out how to teach your coworkers. How do you, how do you show the, 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 the way you use these components, the way you use the tools um, to other developers? Part of the plan is deciding how do you deal with backwards compatibility? It's, it's, it's figuring out um, what do we do about like, maybe, you're, uh, maybe you've decided a component that's used in like 20 or 30 places now needs to be refactored to either do less things or change boilerplate or accept a block where before it was blockless, things like that. How do you, how do you go from one to, uh, to the other? Uh, and what's that path? Um, how do you do it without breaking backwards compatibility? In this context, it's like migrating one invocation at a time, but it's the same problem, right? It's the same thing we, you do with uh, in frameworks. So, um, so, so this plan, this planning stage is, is essentially figuring out how do you make those steps? How do you make those, uh, those, those lateral movements or small improvements uh, over time? And then you communicate. Um, so in, in app development, this is obviously different than RFCs for us, but it's exactly the same problem. You have to communicate with uh, the, the stakeholders, with uh, you know, whoever, whoever, whoever's in charge of product, your other coworkers. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to work with your, your team and, uh, and the folks that, um, the designers or whomever's working with you on the app, right? So it's exactly the same problem. You have to know how you're interfacing. You have to discuss this and make sure that you've accounted for all the things in your plan. Um, uh, and then you have implement. And when you implement it, it's, it's, it's going to be similar to, uh, to when we implement and in, in influence the plan in framework development. So, so as you go forward and you implement, like say you're taking that theoretical case where you have a component that's used in a bunch of sites and you're refactoring it to a new component, you have to decide, well, am I just going to copy all the code into a new thing so I can start and just change one invocation at a time to the new syntax? Uh, are you going to try to make the change backwards compatible and uh, slowly just refactor the invocations? Um, those, are the, those are the things you have to have informed by the implementation. Sometimes it's actually not possible um, to change the, uh, the, the invocation sites and use the same component. You need a dupli uh, like to duplicate so you can move forward. And that feels like a small step, uh, at the very least laterally, possibly backwards, to actually now have two things that have the same code in it or the same purpose. Uh, but the point is, over time, you're going to migrate off of uh, off of one and, and towards another, um, and I think that uh, and I think that that's um, that's ex very similar to what we do in Ember, right? Like we have uh, we have the same problems. We have to migrate people off of some APIs to other APIs, uh, and oftentimes we have both of them in parallel for a long time uh, with deprecations and like guided path forward, um, and, um, and and this is this is exactly the same thing you would do in your app, and then you repeat. Uh, just like this guy in the background here. Um, so you continue the cycle, you continue forward, you continue iterating, um, and, uh, and it never stops, right? You, you're always, I, there's always something that you can do better. There's always something moving forward. There's always something in both the, like the general ecosystem space uh, that, uh, that you're gonna, um, that you're gonna want to, uh, to take advantage of, and you're gonna want to always continue to iterate. Um, so, I, so I actually think that the, the um, why are they so small now? <laughs> so I actually think that it's, it, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, and, I hope that, uh, and I hope that you guys can start thinking about, um, thinking about the, the same problems that you deal with in your app, the same uh, migrations as, as we do uh, in, in framework land. Thank you.